On this day in 2000, Mark Burchill scored the fastest hat-trick in Celtic's history and the fastest in a UEFA club match. With Celtic already 4-0 ahead from the away leg of the UEFA Cup first round tie versus Junes Esch of Luxembourg, it was a second string side sent out by Martin O'Neill to finish the job, including names such as Raphael Scheidt, Olivier Tebele, Colin Healy, Ayl Berkovic and Simon Lynch. Burchill opened the scoring in 12 minutes with a spectacular diving header. His second two minutes later was the reward for his determination to harry the defence as it struggled to deal with a long ball. The third was a clinical first-time finish over the on-rushing keeper from an Ayl Berkovic pass. It all took just three minutes and 30 seconds. Unfortunately, by this time Burchill was becoming impatient at his lack of game time and was demanding a move. He scored his last goal for Celtic in a 3-0 Premier League win at Easter Road on the 9th of September 2000 and then went out on loan, first to Birmingham City, then Ipswich Town, before signing for Portsmouth in a £900,000 deal in the summer of 2001. When he made the first team breakthrough in 1998, Mark Burchill was the latest in a succession of young strikers who had scored barrel loads of goals for the reserves and was being tipped as the next big thing. Promising youngsters like Dougald McCarrison, Jerry Britton, Jerry Craney and Simon Donnelly had all looked at various times as though they might go on to fill the space left by players like Nicholas, McClare and Maccabenny. Only Donnelly came really close, even being selected for the Scotland squad for the 1998 World Cup in France but he would leave under something of a cloud on a Bosman deal along with Phil O'Donnell for the then Premier League Sheffield Wednesday in 1999. With pace to burn, one newspaper did Burchill no favours by calling him Scotland's answer to Michael Owen. It was against this backdrop that Burchill made his debut in an embarrassing 1-0 League Cup defeat at Broomfield in August 1998 as the club struggled to recover from the departure of Vim Janssen. Despite this, Burchill scored a respectable eight goals from 19 appearances, mostly from the bench that season, including the last in the 5-1 thrashing of Rangers in November 1998. The following season was a nightmare for all concerned, as the dream team of Barnes and Dalgleish were brought in and Henrik Larsson broke his leg as the season headed for its implosion after the shock cup defeat to ICT. Despite the absence of Larsson, Burchill still had Mark Viduka and then Ian Wright ahead of him for a starting place. Even so, he played six times for Scotland in 1999, including appearances in both legs of the European Championship playoff matches against England. Viduka and Wright had both gone by the beginning of season 2000-2001, but Henrik Larsson was back as good as ever and new manager Martin O'Neill splashed out £6 million for Chris Sutton. With Tommy Johnson still in the picture, Burchill found himself frustrated by lack of opportunities and demanded a move. Martin O'Neill did not want him to go and told the BBC the day before the Jeunesse match, if I had a son like Mark Burchill, I would be telling him to hang around. Not to spend the next four or five years in Celtic's reserves, but to stay around to see if there is a chance. We haven't got that many centre forwards and it is a long hard season. I would be delighted if he decided to hang around for three or four months, but hanging around does not seem to be in people's vocabulary these days. Burchill got his move, but his career never really took off after Celtic, being sent out on various loans by Portsmouth before settling at Dunfermline for three seasons from 2005 till 2008. His impact on Celtic didn't end in 2000 though. While on loan at Dundee on the 6th of April 2003, he scored Dundee's equaliser in a 1-1 draw with Celtic, which cost the club two vital points as they lost the championship on goal difference, handing Rangers the treble after the heartbreak of Seville. Mark Burchill might have been better served hanging around at Celtic for a bit, as Martin O'Neill advised him. They say the Celtic shirt doesn't shrink to fit inferior players, but sometimes players shrink when they take off the Celtic shirt.